as you guys know, I'm Travis with the Modern Bay Company. This is Chris, our new mechanic. As you guys know, we do Subaru conversions into vintage Volkswagen Bay window buses. This series or this video is part of a series on VW Subaru conversion tips and tricks. And so we're jumping into throttle body, uh, throttle body mania. We'll call it that. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. We're going to show you guys how to convert your throttle bodies for use with a throttle body reverser today. So let's jump right in. Okay. So aside from Chris just standing not awkwardly next to me <laughs> at all, <laughs> we're both on video here today because he's playing the role of you guys of, Hey, what is this? You know, he's going to be asking the questions that I hope you guys would be asking if you are uh, trying to do this. And we're gonna actually do the the uh, conversion to it, so you guys can do it at home. All right, Chris, what do you got? Uh, my first question would be, why do I need a throttle body reverse kit? That's a great question. Um, we sell throttle body reverser kits online. <laughs> <laughs> so these are throttle body reversers. Uh, this is like the modern base special. And the reason that you actually need a throttle body reverser and you need to attach your throttle body to it is because on the stock Subaru setup, hold on. Look at that, I got it on hand right here. So this beautiful manifold, um, usually the throttle body goes right here on the manifold. But when you're doing this conversion in a big window bus, uh, the firewall is about right here. And so you can't fit this guy maybe right there. If you wanted to box out your firewall and have a like 90 degree boot on here, you could do that. But that, uh, that requires cutting and welding to do so. So if you want to fit this in your bay window bus, what we do on all of our builds and what's kind of the accepted you know, common practice is to use a throttle body reverser right there, which repositions this throttle body up here. So the firewall, it does not interfere with the firewall and you can do a nice clean install of your Subaru motor into your bay window bus. So this is a pure fitment issue. It's a fitment issue, yes. But with the fitment issue also causes us to need to do some modification to the throttle body itself. Is there any changes that happen to the power or the actual intake that from doing this change basically is why you have to do the mods that you're about to explain? Do I look like a scientist? <laughs> <laughs> In terms of performance or otherwise, uh, we've not noticed you know any differences at all. Early on with our intake system, uh, we noticed that if we made it too short, you get a, a slight bit of howling. Um, so, but that's just an audible thing. And when we extended our actual intake pipe over here, uh, that went away. And so that's the only uh, performance issue that we've noticed. Uh, you're not really sacrificing anything from reversing your throttle body. All right, Travis, uh, where do I get a throttle body reverser? It's something that we make and sell. Um, I'll just be totally straightforward with you guys. You can make one. If you're super handy, if you're a fabricator or have mad skills, uh, you can get an exhaust donut. These come as 360 degree um, exhaust donuts, these thick, thick wall guys. You can section them. Uh, you can get your, you know, your two planes right on them. This is actually one of our first versions. As you guys can see, there's a bit of a difference between there and there and then even more difference uh, between here and here. But just for purposes of illustration, um, you could make one of these, you could have these uh, laser cut, you could match the faces of your intake and of your throttle body, match these holes. I'll say uh, it was a process for us to get this really, really dialed um, and to create the jig to uh, you know, weld all these up and that sort of thing. So you can make your own and I'm super supportive of the DIY market uh, if you wanna do that. But if you don't want to make your own, you can buy them from us. Uh, and there's other vendors online. I'll give a shout out to Bussaroo and Mick. I think Van Cafe sells them. You know, other folks sell them. And so you can get them, get them from us, get them elsewhere, wherever you get them. Um, great. And before we jump in here, uh, just to give you guys a kind of a gauge on how difficult this job is, it will probably take you 15 minutes. And that's if you're doing going relatively slowly. Um, it's not that hard. We're going to show you exactly how to do it. And so, you know, if you have a Dremel and you have relatively steady hands, I think you'll be all right. Chris, do you have any, any questions before we just jump in? I would assume that you'd grab a Dremel just to clean each surface before you put a gasket in and mate the two units, but am I wrong about that? You are indeed. So what we need to do here to actually do these modifications, and the reason we're doing them is because when your throttle body is mounted on, you know, normally mounted right here directly onto the intake, there's this port that actually allows air to go into your idle air control valve. So when you're at idle, it can actually idle and get an appropriate amount of air. 
Now, when we use a throttle body reverser, that port is no longer there. Now I've seen people do all kinds of stuff, adding an extra pipe sidecar to this pipe to make it work and otherwise, but really um, this is the cleanest and easiest way to do it. And so if we were looking at this guy, what we need to do where the idler control valve is, if you follow that passage right over here, we need to clearance this bit right here. So I'm gonna mark this. This is the section we're notching out and we're going all the way to this parting line down here. So we can generally draw our lines there. So Chris, can you see the notch that we're taking out right there? Yep. The other two things that we do to our throttle bodies is the coolant passages. We actually just cut these off. Uh, they're not necessary, not needed, and uh, only provide more cooling connections, more spot, potential spots for leaks. And also uh, with the reverser, this, the direction of this will interfere um, with how it's mounted. And so we cut these guys off too. Does that make sense? And then you plug them? Uh, we don't need to plug them. It's a coolant in and out passes. So coolant comes in and has a minor warming effect on the throttle body. And that's for extremely edge case situations where uh, let's say you're in, I don't know, negative temperatures in Northern Canada or Alaska or something like that. And you, you start your car, you start driving and the throttles, you know, you, you just keep your foot on the throttle uh, in a specific spot. It could ice and technically freeze your throttle open. Uh, I have never heard anyone having this happen. This has been something that people have been doing for years in terms of cutting these off. And so we're completely comfortable doing it. We've never had any problems with that simplifies everything and um, for such an extreme edge case it's just not worth keeping those on there. Next up what we're actually going to do is clearance this guy instead of talking about clearancing it. So I'm going to get all my all my PPE on. Chris, <laughs> <laughs> Chris is going to hold his breath. It'll be like three or four minutes. Is that cool? All right, cool. <laughs> okay, so we just did three notches. I'm gonna grab some pliers and try to just pop those off. I notch those guys. I think this one will be able to break off. Right there. And we'll clean that up. This one, I'm gonna notch again. I'm not feeling like he man this morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more notch out of that. So getting my notches out. <laughs> exactly. So you can see we're looking ugly right here. That's all right. We're going to clean it up with our other demo here. Okay. So as you can see, we got a nice clean bite out of there. See that on B cam pretty good. So same throttle body. Oh, this still has a gasket on it. So before has that notch, obviously, after it does not. We clean the snot out of these. So, you know, we've got this aluminum dust, we've got our sensors out of this guy, and he's gonna get cleaned like crazy once we're done with that, which we now are. We almost forgot to take our coolant pipes off. So, gonna do this real quick, and this is pretty easy. We just cut these guys right off. Anchor your hand, just like if you're welding or anything else. Anchor your hand, and that's it. We are now prepped. This guy is ready to be super cleaned uh, and put into service on uh, one of our upcoming builds. So that is the actual complete modification. Any questions? Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> that is our video on modifying the throttle bodies uh, for use with a throttle body reverser. Uh, we do sell these guys in our store. It's one of the four products we currently have. More to come soon. I'd love to know if you guys want to, you know, shout out in the comments. Would you rather do something like this and modify your throttle body, or would you rather box in your firewall uh, and then do a, a sharp turn on your intake? Uh, both options work, and so let me know in the comments on that. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Uh, anything else we should add? I don't think so. What's a strong ending? I'm gonna throw a shotgun. Are we still rolling? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna do two shotguns. <laughs> thanks, guys.